amen, to build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry. Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, let's look at verse number 8, Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. Tonight I want to talk to you about, from a subject matter, entitled, Taking Responsibility for Your, your Success. Taking responsibilities for your success. Here I see in the word of God that God says there is a way that we can be successful in life. And I'm not just talking about in the material aspect, but I'm talking about in every aspect of our lives. Whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your material blessings, whatever it is, God says that, listen, there's a way for us to be successful. And he says here that if we keep the word of God in our mouth, Meditate on the word of God day and night. Observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, he says, we'll make our way prosperous and then we shall have what? Good success. Nothing is, is, is more significant and happens long term in life without somebody taking responsibility. Amen. We live in a generation now that everybody tries to pass the buck. It's, it's somebody else's fault. It's my mama fault because she wasn't there. It's my daddy fault because he wasn't there. Instead of taking responsibility for our own actions, amen? For every dream and every vision and every relationship, even the menial task of life, somebody, say, say somebody. Somebody, somebody got to take responsibility, amen? Go to Genesis chapter number one, Genesis chapter one. Those of us who are game changers, amen, take responsibility for life situations and we choose to make, watch this now, make a difference and impact in our own outcome. Amen. Those of us who are game changers, we know how to take responsibility. Amen. Instead of passing the buck, putting it on somebody else. Amen. And when we learn how to take responsibility because God created us to take responsibility. Amen. We are created to be responsible. Amen. Are you in Genesis chapter one? Look at verse number 26, Genesis chapter one, verse number 26. Look what he says. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So here I see from the very beginning of time that God gave man responsibility of what he created. Amen. Now it is only when we decide to pass the buck, amen, that we begin to make excuses for what God told us in the very beginning was our responsibility. And what, what I see happening, Sister Porter, many times is when, when you hear the word responsibility, people run from it. Amen. See, it's more than being, being a, a, a man and, and having babies and not taking care of them. Amen. You got to learn how to be responsible. Glory to God, amen. No, no, I'm serious. See, see, they got these young guys out there just out there making babies and not taking responsibility for, for the child they produced. And that is not God's plan for our lives. Amen. Now, now, again, most people bristle up when they hear the word responsibility. Ooh, responsibility. As, as if they're taking on shame or blame because they're not responsible. Now, I'm not here to bring condemnation on anybody. I'm just here to teach you what the word of God says is our responsibility to be responsible. Amen. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, in every series of lessons, I tried to set the foundation so that we could have a good understanding throughout the series. And as I began to teach the word of God and build precept upon precept, line upon line, you would get the understanding that God wants us to what? Be responsible. Amen. Hallelujah. See, every one of us 
has the ability to make a choice. Amen. Thank God he didn't make us robots. Hallelujah. See, God, God says, I made each of you a free moral agent with the ability to choose. Now, you are responsible for the choice that you made. You know, I was I was I had my sister laughing the other day. Uh, I was talking to her on the phone. I said, uh, your husband is the product of your intelligent decision making. <laughs> and I say, well, how smart are you? She said, brother, I'm very smart. I say, well, praise the Lord. Amen. No, no, no. See, see, we have see once Adam messed it up in the beginning and begin to blame Eve, blame God for Eve. God said, OK, that's the last time I'm going to choose the person you're going to be with. The woman that you, you chose, the man that you chose, that, that, that's, that's your choice, amen? And it's the product of your intelligent decision making. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Look at verse number 19. Watch this now. Look what he says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you what? Life and what? And death. Blessing and cursing. What he says. Therefore what? Choose life that both thou and thy seed, what, may live. So, so God says, the choices that I make not only impact my life, but they impact generations to come. Amen? And so if I take responsibility right now, it, it, will, it will be able to train future generations on how to take responsibility. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching life go by and I'm seeing people who uh, who try to blame others for the choices they made. Amen. And God says life and death are before us. Blessing and cursing are before us. And it is our responsibility to, to choose. And God says, if you don't know what to choose, I'm going to tell you, just choose life. Amen. Because generations are, are, are on the line with your choice that you make. Amen. And I'm, 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 I'm watching this, man. And see, when, when, when uh, this is a personal thing for me because growing up, my father, biological father, didn't take responsibility for the children that he produced. Now, I don't say that to, to knock my father. I'm just telling you the facts, you know. Uh, and, and so I said, Clint, that, that when I got married, that I was going to be with one woman and she's going to have all my children. However many she give, give me, that my quiver will be full. Glory to God. Amen. And because uh, I seen the, 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 the pain that came as a result of somebody not taking responsibility. Amen. And so I said, I will not be a person that will not take responsibility for my actions. I recall one time uh, uh, I, I made this investment. Oh, my God. It, uh, you know, I had a business investment. It was, I thought it was a good investment, you know. And Lady Gwen told me, she said, this is not a good investment. I'm like, well, baby, I got this. I got this. She said, okay, well, go ahead. You, you know, you'll make the decision. But I'm telling you, it's not a good investment. And I, I, I pulled the trigger, Sister Gladdy. I made that investment, and I lost all that money. I'm like, oh, oh. The idea I showed did. listen to your wife. <laughs> that was a lesson learned, TJ. I said, listen to your wife. Because she told me, don't, don't do it. She said, call that ain't a good deal. And I was like, no, baby, I think it's a good deal. You know, I mean, they brought us to the warehouse, showed us all the, all the stuff. And said, look at all the stuff. And, you know, we got this person on board. And we got this, 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 this government official on board with us. And, and, I mean, they had it laid out. And I'm like, okay, oh, man. I, I mean, the, the, the elected officials on board? I'm like, praise God. And lost that money. But I didn't do this. It's their fault. No, I told Gwen, it's, I'm responsible. I made that decision. I lost that money. Now, I'm going to do everything in my power to get it back. Amen? I took responsibility. Because we need people to take responsibility. Amen? Now, now watch this now. The testimony of Scripture teaches us that the Holy Spirit wants believers to be committed and responsible. Amen? Go to uh, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. So let's walk through scripture to see how God wants the believer to take responsibility without exception. Amen. Hallelujah. Without exception. Each one of us must take responsibility 
without exception. Now, now watch this now. See, we have to take responsibility for our salvation in the sense that once we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we become responsible to the kingdom of God. And it is what I do for the kingdom that really matters. Amen. And it's not anybody else's uh, fault that I'm not doing what God told me to do. Amen. That's why you got to be careful to stay in your lane. Amen. See, you are only responsible for your lane that God has called you to. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Look at verse number 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28. Look what he says. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy and my burden is light. So I see a couple of things in this, in this passage. First of all, it is our responsibility to come to him. Amen. And, and listen, God made it easy for us to come to him, Clint, because he said, come as you are. And I, 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 I hear people say, well, I just got to get right first. I got to get right first. Well, listen, if you had the ability to get right first, you would have done it already. But Jesus says, I'm going to take you as you are. So he says, come to me. And then he says, take my yoke upon you. That's your responsibility. Amen. To take what God has given us to, for you. Amen. And then he says, it is your responsibility to learn of me. Hallelujah. So even if the pastor or the preacher don't teach you the word of God, that ain't, look, your responsibility is to learn. Amen. God has already, he said it, Angie, study. He didn't say wait till you get to church to study. He said that you need to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. It is your responsibility to learn. Now, of course, I have a responsibility as your pastor to teach you the word of God. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, for you to search the scripture daily. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. OK, go to Job 36, Job 36. I just want to show you that the scripture has over and over again is trying to tell us that we need to take responsibility. Hallelujah. Job 36. Look at verse number 11. Job 36. Verse number 11. Are you ready? Look what he says. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So here I see God says that if, if, if. So my responsibility is to obey and serve him. That's my responsibility. And God says, if you do what you're supposed to do, then I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to cause you to live your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. But you got to do what your responsibility is. Obey and what? Serve him. Amen. And, and here's the key. Obedience is just hearing what God told you to do and doing it. Mary says this to, to the disciples when Jesus was at the wedding. He says, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Amen. That's all that God requires of us. Whatever I told you to do, do it. I, I, I'm reminded clearly of that time that the Spirit of God told you to go and, uh, to that restaurant uh, uh, and, 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 and you're going to encounter somebody. Well, it was your responsibility to go. Now, it was God's responsibility to make somebody show up for you. Amen. For you to be a blessing. Right. But if you didn't go, you couldn't carry out the assignment. Amen. So it is our responsibility to obey and serve him. OK, go to Malachi chapter three, Malachi chapter three. Amen. Over and over again, I'm seeing that God is requiring us to be responsible. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter three. Look at verse number eight. Malachi chapter three, verse number eight. Look what he says. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole generation. 
Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So here I see that God says it is our responsibility as believers to finance the kingdom of God. Amen. The only way the kingdom is going to be financed is not because we go into the world and ask Budweiser to sow into the kingdom. No, it is the responsibility of born again believers to bring their tithe and their offerings to the local church. That's that's God's plan. And, and most people watch this now. Many people uh, uh, don't participate in this blessed uh, this blessing that God has in store for us. For those of us who give. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, I thank God, you know, just looking out over the audience. See, the, the Wednesday night crowd is not the crowd to teach tithing to. Because they tithe us. For the most part, people that come to Bible study, they good. That's why I never teach on giving on a Wednesday night. Because y'all got it. <laughs> and it's the folks on Sundays that, that need to hear their responsibility of financing the kingdom of God. See, there has been no chicken who died on behalf of Faith Christian Center Church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have never sold a chicken dinner. Now, 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 let me say this. If that's what you choose to do to sell chicken dinners to finance the kingdom, that's on you. But I'm telling you, God's plan, what I see is the only way he says for us to finance his kingdom is that we give. Amen. Tithes and offerings. And it is our responsibility to carry out the mission. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Just trying to show you that there are some things that God says that we are responsible for. And if I could just see and get a revelation that I am to be a responsible believer. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I just need to do my part. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 28. Look at verse number 18. Matthew 28. We'll start at verse number 19. 19. Matthew 28, verse number 19. Look what he says. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, Aline, I see that God says that we should be responsible for witnessing for him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we thank God for all the technology that we have here at the church. I mean, we're able to touch 200 countries every time we go on the air. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that doesn't substitute for your responsibility to go out and witness to somebody. Because it's the one-on-one -on -one encounters. Amen. That really makes the difference. Well, you're able to touch somebody. Were they able to hear your testimony of how God delivered you out of something and how he could do it for them? It's our responsibility to go out and witness to somebody, to tell the good news of the kingdom of God. Amen. So we cannot, we cannot pass the buck and say, well, we got all that technology. Amen. I gave toward the television ministry. Well, praise the Lord you gave toward the television ministry. But you still need to witness. But here it is. I don't want people to know my business. Well, hold up a second. It ain't your business once you got saved. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Once you got saved, it ain't your business no more. Hallelujah. Jesus told the people, he said, look, you go back and tell them what I've done for you. That's all you got to do. Go back to your own community, to your own sphere of influence, and just tell them what I've done for you. <laughs> so I see the scriptures. I see the scriptures. I see the scriptures telling us that God wants us to be responsible. Okay. Go to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter six, Hebrews chapter six. So not only do I see the scriptures that testifies that we as believers ought to be responsible. But then, Angie, I can see the testimony of the saints of God to prove to us that we ought to be responsible. Amen. And look, when we look at these people, especially those who are in the hall of fame of faith, we admire them. Amen. But all of them that are in the Hall of Fame, watch this now, they, be, they were responsible. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Look at verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse number 12. Look what he says. 
that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience did what? They inherit the promises. So we're going to look at some saints and look at their testimony to see if they were responsible. Now, of course, with each one of them, for instance, Moses became responsible. <laughs> I had to put that became because when he first sees the burning bush and has an encounter with God, watch this now. And God tells him, I'm going to use you to emancipate my people. Moses said, oh, not me. I can't talk. <laughs> Look, what, who am I going to tell him sent me? I mean, he started, I mean, Mary Jane, he began to give all these excuses on why he, I'm not the responsible one. You want me to lead a, a, a nation out of bondage? Who, me? I, I'm, I'm a fugitive. I'm running from justice. And if I go back there, they might arrest me. But God says, Moses, it's time for you to take responsibility. Wow. Now, all the excuses you made, I'm going to counter that. You say you can't speak. I got your brother. You ask the question, well, who, who should I say? Send me say I am that I am sent you. You need you need the, you need the miraculous. What's that thing in your hand? That stick. I'm going to use that stick in your hand. Amen. I'm going to take every excuse away from you. Watch this now to be responsible. Glory to God. Amen. And we applaud Moses. Amen. For leading the children of Israel out. We applaud Moses for getting to the Red Sea and holding up his staff. And the Red Sea opens up and they walk across on dry ground. We applaud Moses for being a person who is responsible. Amen. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now, now, now not only was Moses responsible, but David was responsible. Oh, my God. Now, here's this this scrawny little boy about 17 years old that God anoints Sister Pew to be the next king. Watch this now. When Saul messed up and God ripped the kingdom from him and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the kingdom to somebody else, God went to some, find somebody that was minding the sheep. He tells the prophet, go down to Jesse's house. The next king is in his house. Well, Jesse, he, you know, Samuel begins to want to pour the oil on the boys, but the oil wouldn't run on the older boys. And so he asked his son, do you have another son? Do you have anybody else left that, 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 that this oil can flow? Yeah, well, well, his daddy didn't even believe in him because his daddy didn't even call him into the house until a prophet said, go get him. Now, here he is anointed to be the next king. In 1 Samuel chapter 16. But oh, daddy said, go down. Bring your brother something to eat. And while he went, amen, he hears a big old giant called Goliath talking trash about his God. And everybody else is scared of Goliath. Amen. Everybody else is cowered down. But David said, hey, I'll do it. I'll take responsibility. <laughs> 1 Samuel chapter 17. Why do you watch this, man? 1 Samuel chapter 17. Look at verse number 32. Watch what, watch what David says. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. Hold up a second. Hold up. You can talk about me not being able. You ain't even going. You the king. Now, you have the ability, but you ain't even going down there. So don't talk about me wanting to be responsible. Amen. Glory to God. Let me finish reading my scripture. He said, he said, he said, you, you can't go down and fight him. Watch this. Uh, For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion 
and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, go be responsible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let the Lord be with you, amen. So, so, so David said, it doesn't matter how old I am. Amen. Look, that's right. With God on my side, who shall I fear? Amen. And so David takes responsibility to go and kill this giant that's talking about his God. Woo, praise the Lord. Okay, y'all. All right. So I see Moses was a man of responsibility. I see David was a man of responsibility. Y'all remember old Gideon? Now, Gideon was a, 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 Gideon was a character, man. And see, God, God, God had to work with Gideon to get him to a place of responsibility. God goes to Gideon and says, you are a mighty man of valor. And Gideon looked around like, who are you talking to? In other words, God was telling him, you are a man of responsibility. And Gideon was like, hold up a second. You, you can't be talking about me. You know who my people are? <laughs> and so, so, so. So God said, no, you're the one getting, you're the one, you're the one I'm going to use. You're the one. So he said, he said, okay, God, if you really want me to be the responsible one, I got this fleece and I'm going to lay it on the ground. And if you make one side of it wet and one side of it dry, I know you're talking to me. So, so the next day Gideon gets up, go get, check, check his fleece. And it's just as he said. He said, okay, 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 okay. Uh, look, look, God, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you now, but look, can you do it the other way? Make this side dry and the other side wet, and I know you want me to be responsible. He, he did exactly what he said. Now watch this now. Here is Gideon in Judges chapter 6 and 7. God wants Gideon to go fight an army of 135,000 men. That's responsibility. You want me to lead an army of 32,000 men. But then you tell me, God, you got too many. Hold up a second. They got 135,000. I got 32,000. I'm still outnumbered. And you telling me I got too many. He said, yeah, you got too many. He said, tell the ones who want to go home, go home. And they went home. They didn't want to take responsibility for that fight. Amen. Then God says, okay, you still have too many. Look, I, I need you to break it down even further. Look, the ones that, that, that drink water with their heads up, that's the ones who would take responsibility. So he went from 32,000 down to 300. And God said, now it's time for you to take some responsibility. Woo, Jesus, amen. Now the odds are stacked against you, Gideon, but that's okay, I'm with you. <laughs> amen. See, see, when you took responsibility and said, I'll go, look, you got my backing. And God just wanted to prove to him that a man of responsibility, you know, he take the responsibility that he was going to show up with him. And you won't even have to take the credit because there is no way in the natural that 300 men could kill 135,000. But God, <laughs> Woo, but God, but God, see, in your situation. It may seem like the odds are stacked against you, but when you become a person of responsibility, God shows up and watch this now. Then it's a but God moment. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Go to Luke chapter one, Luke chapter one, Luke chapter one, because it's not just men who took responsibility. But see, God would use anybody who's willing to accept the responsibility. Amen. And cause the world to be blessed. So. So here, here is God Almighty. He sends his angel to talk to this virgin woman to see if she would accept the responsibility of carrying the Savior. <laughs> Amen. So he sends down the angel Gabriel to talk to Mary. Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, if, if I got the favor of God on me, amen, there's nobody that can stop me. So watch this now. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. 
And the Lord shall, uh, shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, uh-oh, watch this now. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest, watch this now, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And watch, watch here's, here's where Mary takes responsibility, verse 38. And Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. So, so here is Mary gets the best assignment ever to be responsible to carry the Son of God in her womb. And she asked the question, say, well, hold up a second. How is this going to happen? Because I ain't never been with nobody. He said, don't worry about that. The Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you, going to impregnate you. You're going to have the Son of God on the inside of you. Man, that, that had to, look, from a, from a natural perspective, you thinking about that thing? That'll trip you out. <laughs> Can't even trip you out. I mean, you, uh, the, the Holy Ghost is going to come on. How is that going to happen? Amen. But she said, I'll take responsibility. I'll take responsibility of being the mother of the savior of the whole world. Oh, my God. Could you imagine that? That she decided she made a choice that I will be the responsible person to be the one to carry the savior of the whole world. What a what what a decision she made. She said, I'll, I'll be the one. I'll be the one. So I see Moses was a person of responsibility. I see David was a person of responsibility. I see Gideon was a person of responsibility. I see Mary was a person of responsibility. But watch this now. I also see that the disciples were people of responsibility. He, he, they spend some time with Jesus. And Jesus begins to speak into their lives on how things are going to happen. But he says, now, after I'm gone, I'm going to give you another comforter. He's going to be with you. He's going to live on the inside of you. And watch this now. Once you receive that power that I'm telling you is coming on the day of Pentecost, you need to be witnesses for me. Amen. You need to go tell the world on, on who I am. Amen. And what I've done to, to, to achieve their salvation. And he says, now you take responsibility to be the ones, the carriers of the gospel. And the Bible says that these disciples did exactly that. To the point where it says in Acts chapter 17, these are the ones who turned the world upside down. They took responsibility. But with all of them, I can't leave out Jesus. Here is the son of God. The sinless savior who, who, who the Bible calls the lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. Now, now here, here's Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane and he sees the pain that he's going to have to go through in order to achieve the goal of, of being the, the savior of, of mankind. And he looks in the cup and he don't want to, he don't want to, he don't want to drink that cup, man. You know, Jesus was like, man, I, I look, from a natural perspective, I don't even want to go like this. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. He, he took responsibility. He, look, he said, he say, I know I got to go to that cross. I know I got to go die for mankind. Now, which one of you would go and die for somebody that ain't going to appreciate what you've done? No, no, think about this for a second. I mean, they finna crucify him. I mean, this is the, the ultimate death 
for a world that won't even appreciate what he's done. But I'm reminded of what Jesus says. He say, he say, you know what? No man can take my life from me. I'm responsible enough to lay it down. And watch this now. If I lay it down, I got the power to raise it up again. <laughs> Jesus a bad boy, clear. He's a bad boy, man. I tell you, he said, I'll take, I'll take responsibility. I'll take responsibility. I'm willing to go and die for you. Here's why I'll die for you. Because I love you. Amen. I love you so much that if you were the only person on the earth, I still would die for you. I still would take responsibility to take away the sins of the world. Because I'm responsible. And see, that's what we have to get to. We say we want to be like Jesus. Well, Jesus took responsibility. Amen. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't allow folk to bring him excuses. Even when the disciples, you know, all these 5,000 people were following him. And they were hungry. And, and Jesus said, what, what do we have? What do we have? And they said, we don't have enough for all these folk. He said, but well, take inventory and find out what we have. Well, we have two small fish and five barley loaves of bread, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, I'll take responsibility. Bring them to me and watch what, watch what I do. Father, how I thank you. Amen. And, and watch it now. Because he took responsibility, the Bible says that he fed all those men and he had 12 baskets remaining. Because he was able to take responsibility. He didn't make an excuse. See, we got to get beyond the excuse. See, an excuse will cause you to miss the blessings of God. See, just on the other side of your excuse is the promise that God made you. Ooh, Jesus, amen. Yeah, yeah, on the other side of your excuse, that's the, the promise that God made you. Well, you know, I'm, I'm tired of my husband. Well, on the other side of that excuse. Hey, man, look, look, people, people, people are dealing with stuff, man. And if they would just take responsibility, God will help them. Mm -hmm. But, 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 but right now, right now, it's easier for us to say it's somebody else's fault. Well, I would have done it if you would have. See, when I talk, when I talk to married folk, I'm like, listen, all you got to do is take responsibility for your own action. See, I, t I tell the man. It don't matter what she do. What are you doing? If you do what you're supposed to do, it don't matter what she does. And vice versa. If lady, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, he gonna fall in line. Amen. The Bible tells you that. Look, as much as lies within you, you do what's right. <laughs> Amen. You do what's right. Amen. And God will take care of the rest. Yeah, you just do what you're supposed to do. Hey Amen. So I, 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 I try to tell me and I try to tell these youngsters, man, it's, look, look, guys, let me, let me tell y'all how, how to be successful in life. Okay? If, if you would just follow what God said, go, go back to Joshua chapter one. Let's, let's see what we end with this tonight. See, see, everybody looking at how many degrees you have, what school you're matriculated in, how much money you have in the bank, you know, how many material possessions you have, all that stuff ain't, don't mean you're successful. Amen? None of that stuff. He say, he say, your life doesn't consist of the things that you, you've obtained. Amen? Because all, all, all that stuff could be taken. Look, I, just two weeks ago, I mean, all the stuff, that boy came in our house, took all our stuff, that stuff is, I told Gwen, all that stuff can be replaced. Don't even fret over that stuff, man. That's just stuff. So I try to tell these youngsters, here's how you be successful in life. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Look what he says. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt do what? Meditate, think on it, muse over the word of God day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You know what God told me is, here's how God made us. God made, made each and every one of us response-able. 
Did y'all get that? That we're re responsible, but we are response able. Whatever my situation is, I'm response able. No matter what it looks like, I'm created to be response able. It might look difficult, but I've been made to be response able. Amen? Because, because we got the greater one living on the inside of us. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You've been made response able. You're able to respond to every situation. Amen? Ain't no sense you crying in your milk. You've been made response able. You've been made responsible. Amen. And here's how you be successful in life by taking responsibility to meditate on. Keep that word in your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Do what God says to do. Then you're going to make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. In whatever area. Look, look, look. OK, this is how this is how I look at life. Whatever I do, I'm going to be the best at it. Because I'm responsible. Amen. When I was when I was managing managing the shoe store, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to dress the best. I wanted to look the best. I wanted to sell, sell, sell the most shoes. Amen. I was response able. Amen. Even 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 now that I I I, I officiate basketball, watch this now. I'm response able. I don't let nobody get me out of my out of who I am. I mean, they be cussing all these folk out. I'm like, they ain't talking to me. So in support of what I do, you know, a coach might be upset. I walk over to him. I say, look, I'm response able. Okay, here's how this is going to work. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so with all of us, it's about a choice. Are you going to stop blaming everybody else? You gonna stop blaming everybody else for your downfall. You gonna stop blaming everybody else for your mood, your attitude. Nope, nobody can nobody can steal your joy unless you let them. Amen. I mean, you 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 let them come in and take your joy. You let them come in and take your peace. That, that preacher called me one time and left a message on the phone and said, I don't, I don't understand why you always laughing and having a good time while you're preaching. I'm like, I ain't going to let him steal what, my joy out of me. Mm -mm. Amen. No, 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 no. I'm responsible. So when I face a difficult situation, the Bible says in the times of famine and distress, you laugh at that situation. That's my response because I'm able. <laughs> Jesus, amen, 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 amen. Lord, God, amen. So, so, so over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how we take responsibility, amen, for our success. Now, again, it's not just in one area of our lives. It's in every area of our lives. I believe that God wants us to be successful. I believe that God wants you to be the light and the salt of this world. Right? Now, now people follow the light. They'll follow the light. Mm -hmm. and, and watch this now. God say, it ain't even about you being the light. I'm going to get the glory out of this. That's what God says. Yeah. Amen. But we got to be responsible. Take responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for your attitude. Take responsibility for what you say out of your mouth. Take, just take responsibility. Amen. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs>